We're going a little retro today. If you can see the old Sencor case. I've been doing some CRTs lately. And I stumbled across this and my hunts. Which this is a CR70 uh, tube tester or CRT tester rejuvenator. It's rather complete. It's got both CRT books. It's got the universal adapter. Kind of an IDC style connector. We will be using that here in a bit. That's why I have the fluke out. We have adapter number one. The other side is adapter number two. We have adapter number three. The other side is adapter number four. We have adapter number five. The other side is adapter number six. We have adapter number seven. Flip side's nothing. We have adapter nine. Flip side is ten. Don't know what adapter number eight is. It's not in the kit. We have adapter 13. Flip side is nothing. So I've looked on YouTube. There's no real clear uh, field test uh, videos. They're really grainy, dark lighting. So I figured, let's do a field test. So let's prepare this thing. Let's put her in the wall socket here. She has AC juice. We will need to hook up the universal adapter. And I will read off the instructions. I might fumble or get the steps mixed up because I'm not using a highlighter. Um, so, for the CRT setup, we need the universal adapter. F1 needs to be to 1. F2 needs to be to 2. K needs to be set to 3. G1 set to 4. G2 set to 5. Cut off down, down. Okay. We're going to gun select, goes to black and white scope. And CRT is at video. We are set up there. We need the multimeter and DC volts. We have our universal adapters leads. That'd be F2, F1. K, we're going to need that. G1 and G2. So we need G1, which is going to be the positive lead. So G1. We'll go positive. K. We'll go to the negative. Okay, the first test we're going to do is the remove G1 short test. So we're going to set that to remove G1 short. We're going to power the unit on. Okay, and we're going to hit the rejuve button, which is the red button. And we should uh, have a reading greater than 350 volts. So, watch the meter. And we have 399 volts there. 396. Okay. Let the capacitor recharge. Hit it again. 402 volts. 
G1 short seems to be working. Okay, we're going to go down to the rejuve. And the meter should read over 350 volts again when we hit the rejuve button. Which we have 404 volts, so. We will hit that again. 405, 406, 404. That looks good. Okay, now we're going to go to the auto restore. And we need to switch the meter over to current. Okay, now we are on current. And we want our readings to be between... Uh, 80 and 120 milliamps DC. So, and it should go on and off three times on its own. So the first time we have 115 milliamps DC. Second time, another 115 milliamps DC. Third time, 115 milliamps DC. And she's off. Okay, the next test would be a manual restore. A manual restore one. And she should be between 80 and 120 milliamps DC. We had 115.3 milliamps right there. That's doing good. Okay. Manual two restore should be greater than 150 milliamps DC. So that means more than 150 milliamps DC. And we're getting 168, 167 milliamps DC. So I'm going to say that function tests good. Okay, <clears throat> now we want to read the bias voltage. So, we need the function switch to cut off. We need to bring the meter back to DC voltage DC. Okay. And I think something is off here. Function switch to cut off. Oh, we are on AC. That's why it's goofing up. Might want to put the meter to the right thing. Okay. So. First one we're going to check is negative 20 volts. We are at negative 19.7. Negative 34 or 36 volts is coming up at negative 34.9. Looks like we're a little bit off. Not sure if anybody has a calibration manual for these floating around somewhere. 52 volts is showing 50 volt. 68 volts is showing 65 volts. So, that should be close enough. So, we are 68 is showing 65. 52 is showing negative 50. Negative 36 is showing negative 34. Negative 20 is showing negative 19.7. Next test. <clears throat> is cut off. Okay. So, we need to put the positive on G2. There we are, G2. And be careful touching these, they will give you a zap um, if you have the capacitor in here charged up and you touch the wrong two, trust me. Um, and 
I think that's the only one we need to move right now. So we should swing between 20 volts DC and 400 DC, which we are 410. And a 22.4. So she's reading a little high. Um, like I said, I don't know if anybody out there has a uh, calibration manual. But that is cut off all the way down. Is reading 22. Should be 20. All the way up is 410 volts DC. And she should be reading right at 400. Not sure if this should be super precise, but... Next, we're gonna to go to filament volts. All right, now we need to move the ground to F1. So we've got F1 right there. Connect to ground. We need to move the positive to F2. G1K, there's F2. Here we are on F2, so the filament volts. Um, so we should be able to do our filament set, and we should get a reaction here on the voltage, and it should progressively go up. So uh, one is going from half a volt to 1.6 volt. Two is going from 1.17 volt to 3.2 volts. Three is going from 1.75 volt to 4.8 volt. Four goes from 2.3 volt to 6.3 volt. Six goes from 3.4 to 9.6. Eight goes from 4.6 to 12.8. Nine goes from 5.2 to 14.4. 12 goes from 6.9 to 19.2. 13 goes from 7.5 to 20.8. That is all the steps in the uh, CR70 field test. Um, this one seems to check out okay, I would say within reasonable limits, but I'll leave it up to you guys in the comments. Um, if it's not to spec, please shout out. And if anybody has a calibration manual, uh, I have not been able to find it online. I was able to find the user manual and schematics um, and parts list. Um, but uh, no service manual on how to calibrate this thing or uh, check the calibration. So I'm going to turn this off and wish you guys a happy weekend. And hope uh, you find this video helpful. If you have one of these uh, CR70 Universal CRT Analyzer and Restores, they call it the Beam Builder. So, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them.